Catherine Mady Wilson Binkley. 94 years. 94. 92 years a Christ follower. That's quite a record, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? Mom tells, tells us that sometime in between age two and three at the little Sunday school in Pleasant Valley where she was first introduced to Jesus loves me. She began to understand the significance of being loved by Jesus. And from that point on for 92 years, continued to grow and nurture that friendship, that relationship that she had with her Lord and Savior. 92 years. Catherine, we're here to celebrate a life well lived. And we thank all of you for coming. Uh, we've got lots of family here. Um, if the whole family were here, uh, there would be 90 of us. Uh, and I haven't counted how many are here. I know some could not come. Um, but we appreciate the friends and the neighbors and fellow pastors who, who've come today uh, to help us in our celebration and, and share in our, our celebration. And that's what uh, Catherine wanted this to be, was a celebration. So we will, uh, in that celebration, we'll be reflecting, we'll be remembering, and in that moment we will perhaps share some, some laughs and some tears. Uh, that's all part of remembering, isn't it? And uh, it's exciting that Catherine gave us the kind of heritage that can be celebrated in the life that she lived. Uh, we have... Uh, some flowers here uh, sent by the Midwest Region Conference, uh, Bob and Deb Etherton, uh, and notice the three roses, symbol, uh, symbolic of the three states or three conferences that uh, mom served in, uh, Illinois, Ohio, and Indiana. Isn't that something? And we have a number of other uh, neighbors here and and relatives from Illinois and friends from Ohio, a number of pastors uh, here, the Van Horns, uh, were fellow pastors with mom and dad, and uh, uh, the, the Whetstones from the church here, of course the Heathertons. So thank you all for coming. And uh, Catherine's doctor is here also. Uh, he took care of her for many years. Dr. Brown, thank you for coming, Dr. Brown. Thanks for uh, taking good care of her. And uh, <clears throat> uh, Monday, when uh, when uh, Char and I were in Illinois, and Monday we were going to visit Mom's home place, where she was born and raised. We were going to visit some of the churches that she was part of. We were going to go to Pleasant Valley, where she first heard about Jesus and and his love for her. Uh, we were going to visit the cemetery where mom and dad's ashes were going to be buried in Lanner. And uh, that morning got the call uh, from the nursing home that uh, mom was uh, struggling. And uh, over the next few minutes got several phone calls. And, and between those phone calls were calls to Dr. Brown, keeping track of her. And, and you know what my thought was? Um, I thought I had all my emotions out, so I, I don't use Kleenex. <laughs> um, uh, the thought occurred to me, uh, where's Vic? And of course we know where Vic is. Uh, Vic is the oldest of uh, Carl and Catherine's uh, children, uh, our brother. And uh, of course he's in heaven. And that's where he needed to be, I guess, because uh, in my mind, I imagined that Catherine and God got together uh, Monday morning, and Mom, I think, said to God, how can I get out of here? <laughs> and so they arranged this uh, physical phenomenon, whatever it was, and uh, she made her 15th move and her final move. And that home will require nothing for Dad to remodel. 
Uh, he doesn't have to put a bathroom in it. He doesn't have to rebuild the kitchen cupboards. But they can celebrate and, and live in the presence of Jesus, their Savior, for eternity. And uh, I can just imagine the, the, the occasion when uh, Mom entered heaven and I believe she was embraced by Jesus and Jesus whispered in her ear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And of course right there with me, Dad and Vic and all of the others. <clears throat> And just think of that kind of a reunion. And mom's life goal was that all of her children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, would experience that kind of move, that kind of a final move. And uh, we'll hear mom talk about that in just a few minutes. So we've got a couple of video clips of mom. On uh, Sunday, the 17th, Mom was a, uh, a writer, a journaler. We have over a hundred of these journals of Mom's. And uh, they, uh, they share thoughts, feelings, uh, events of what's going on in her life and in the family through the years. And uh, what a treasure. Uh, but on Sunday, she wrote, 10.30 a.m., God is with me. And then she writes out her name, Catherine Binkley. Uh, it's amazing what mom was still able to remember and what she wasn't able to remember. Uh, not too long ago when I visited her, uh, uh, for lack of things to talk about, I would get the family picture out and dad's picture and, and uh, she would ask me about my family, and I'd say, well, and I'd tell her about my family, and then I would say to her, tell me about your family. Just conversation. Otherwise, she'd be asking me again, how's my family? <laughs> so she would go down to the list, and, and, and she said, and that's my husband. He was a wonderful man, but I can't think of his name. <laughs> was her, her world the last couple of years. And, um, but she, in all of those memory lapses, she, she still knew she had eight kids and generally could name them. And when I walked in, I don't know if the other kids experienced this or not, but uh, it was pretty precious to me. <laughs> Stephen! <laughs> How she would greet me. She'd greet you guys that way too? That, that, that's good. And, uh, but she, her faith and her relationship with the Lord was so real to her. And uh, it's such a blessing to know that she didn't forget that. She could recall it. And uh, here's one of her Bibles. Uh, we've got a number of her Bibles. Uh, the one prior to this was falling apart. So this was purchased, and uh, just recently uh, we purchased her another one because this one's falling apart. But oftentimes when I would go in and the family would go in, she'd be uh, reading you know, the Bible. And uh, to carry on conversation or whatever, we would read some of the letters and cards that she would get from some of you folks and some of from the family. And uh, she would say, I probably have read it before, but I don't remember. Read it to me again. <laughs> and I think that's how she read the Bible. Like it was new every morning. And she left us some instructions that she wanted to speak into the service today. Uh, she knew we were going to be meeting. Didn't know when. But she wanted us to, uh, to follow a few of her instructions. And I think mom, uh, if I had to pick one word to describe mom, I would pick the word nurturing. She was a nurturer. And it didn't matter. She loved people and she loved the children and she nurtured them. 
but plants, dolls, the neighbor kids, somebody that came by the house, people in the church, she nurtured them. She wanted to advance their relationship with life and with the Lord. So out of her nurturing, uh, she was very loving, but she was also very intentional. And so uh, she gave us some instructions for today. Just excuse me for a moment. I'm going to go over here and get a black box, but it's not the cremation box, okay? So just <laughs> hang on. Okay, this box, mom and dad had for many, many years. I don't know if you kids saw it or not. But every once in a while when I would visit them, they would want to go through the black box. Because in it, and you can see here mom has written, there's 21 things that they had kept in this black box. And a lot of it had to do with her important papers, of course. Uh, and uh, so uh, when I got home from Illinois this week, I got the black box out so I could see what our instructions were for today. And of course, uh, there's her birth certificate was uh, in there, her uh, marriage license, social security card, her passport from, uh, and the, the entry in here is in 1995 when they went to Haiti to visit with uh, Vic and Donna. And uh, other, this is her bio information that she made up uh, power of attorney, her last will and testament, uh, our wishes in case of terminal illness, the Lanark Cemetery deed, cremation wishes, and then the memorial service. Here it is. And um, so these these are her instructions, and we're going to try our best to uh, to follow them today. Is that okay? All right. She says, uh, "I shall try to put down my wishes." I would like a praise and worship service to be held where all can relax and rejoice that a life has been lived for God and a soul is at home with Him. That's how she talks. I would like the hymn, Draw Me Nearer, to be sung. It has been my prayer for many years, and I've prayed and sung it often in the mornings as, I, as an intimate part of my worship of my God. I'd love to sing it, as I walk with my Lord in the morning's early hours. And mom was a walker, and uh, she, I'm sure she walked down by the fast house in and, and the mornings. And, uh, and I, I know that that was a very intimate time for her to, to be with her Lord. And then she says, I love to walk, and I look forward to walking painlessly with my Lord. Uh, she probably took a walk this morning. And then she says, these are my wishes to supersede any previous given. Uh, and this was 30 years ago. <laughs> November 16th, 1985. And she writes this. So, so we're going to do our best to, uh, to do what Mom said. Because it was my mother talking. And we're going to pay attention to that. So right now in your programs is uh, Draw Me Nearer, the song that Mom would sing and, and pray. And as we sing it together, Donna is going to lead <coughs> and, and Ruth, uh, think in terms of it as a prayer. And here's this, this life well lived, this, this Catherine Mady Wilson Binkley for all those years, close relationship with the Lord, and still wanting to be closer. Still closer. So we're going to sing it together, okay? Mm -hmm. 